So what really caught my attention about the TV series Swarm was an interview where he spoke to Dominique about what he wanted the character to have. He said he told Fishback, think of it more like an animal and less like a person. So I want to really get onto that because I feel like for you as a director to describe someone who is playing a black woman as an animal and not expect that the audience is also feeling that it like validates narratives of people who don't already like black women. And that I think is what I speak to with Donald Glover. I feel like his media validates a certain experience of people who are already very apprehensive or don't like black women. Sometimes it don't make no sense Does it really have to? There is nothing I can say Hi! Welcome to Maya's World. So hi, my name is Maya. Um, on my channel, I like to dissect things around the umbrella of anti-blackness. Today, we're going to be talking about Donald Glover's issue with black women. Before I continue in this video, I just want to say that all of the things I'm saying is completely a figment of my own imagination. Everything I'm saying is completely alleged. I am not a trustable source, but I am telling you my thoughts through my theories and hopefully you all can, you know, um, see where I'm coming from and you know, I don't want to get no letter. I'm not trying to get sued. So yes. For those who don't know, Donald Glover is a multi-talented um, creator. He is a director. He is a musician. He is a actor. You know, he, he did stand up comedy. He's just like known for a lot of things. Today's topic is going to be around the movie Swarm and my thoughts on how I feel like it shows very obvious the disconnect that he has from black women. Swarm is a, it's a movie about a serial willer. I can't say the word for, you know, reasons, but it's about a serial willer um, and she is a black woman played by Dominique Fishback, who is an incredible actor, actress. Swarm is supposed to be a critique on Stan culture. I watched the TV series. It made me feel incredibly anxious. There were so many things that I had issue with and I want to discuss it in this video. So I know Swarm was written by Donald Glover and Janine Neighbors, who is a dark skinned black woman. But when it comes to critique on how people see black women in media, I don't care if it's a black man or a black woman because I feel like it still stands regardless of who's, you know, these tropes still exist regardless of who's saying it, right? But I think that what I wanna to speak to is, I know it was co-written by Donald Glover, but this isn't the first time that Donald Glover has had pushback from black women. So I wanna kinda of go through his history of the things that I find to be problematic and why I think he ended up where he did. So what really caught my attention about the TV series Swarm was an interview that where he spoke to Dominique about what he wanted the character to have. I kept telling her, you're not regular people. You don't have to find the humanity in the character. That's the audience's job, he said. He acknowledged that made it harder for her. In quote, she really was lost a lot of the time. In quote, think of it more like an animal and less like a person. So I want to really get onto that because I feel like for you as a director to describe someone who is playing a black woman as an animal and not expect that the audience is also feeling that back is kind of ridiculous because I feel like um, we all know like historically what it means to compare to like completely strip black women of their humanity altogether. Like we live in a society that does that. And when black women get outraged, it's never seen as like a serious kind of deal because we were seen as always overreacting. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It's always seen as like um, the group that's easiest to like dispose of. Janine Neighbors, who is one of the co-writers, described this as, as a love letter to black women. My good sister, if this is a love letter to black women, you can keep the letter. And I just want us to always remember that having hiring black people does not suddenly make the show any less misogynoir, right? Like, it's cool you were writing it, but if you have no ability to unpack the stereotypes that happen when you have black people on camera, I don't, it's, what's the difference between this and a white person making it, if there's no analysis. Aside from, so Donald Glover, aside from him making it really, really clear through his music that he was not really for the sisters in the sense where he like has literally fetishized Asian women through his, I don't know, first, second, third album. He's had many things. We're not even addressing that because that's in, that in itself is its own video. Aside from him fetishizing Asian women, when people make, like when black men make music and they're literally big upping non-black women, it's very clear to black women that this person isn't going to be for us. So is it that surprising if somebody who does not like center black women and think of black women in their work, is it that surprising that they have um, problematic 
views when it comes to black women, no. Something also too about Donald Glover, I feel like the reason that people give Donald Glover a lot of space is because they he kind of plays into like the nerdy black guy trope. And I feel like, you know, he's given a lot of compassion within being the nerdy black guy, right? Because I think there's this like sentiment that sometimes black men who were super nerdy, who, who felt like they were being bullied or ostracized, are expected to date outside because there's this like rhetoric that like black women don't understand them, which is kind of funny because you kind of paint black women as a complete monolith as if like nerdy black women don't exist. But anyway, I think, you know, that th there's this like feeling that, oh, he's gotten bullied. That's why he feels the way he feels. And that's why he makes the work of art that often punches down on black women. I don't think I could marry like a white woman. Like, I don't think so. Maybe, why but I that? don't think so. Because I need someone racist like me. <laughs> <laughs> to see the world the way I need to come home and be like, we, yo, like, you need because, she, with... because a white woman in general is not going to see that. Back in 2011, so like a long time ago, I went to go see him in concert with my sister because my sister was super obsessed with Donald Glover. Like she was just like one of his biggest fans. So we went to go see him in concert. And what I thought was really fascinating about his concert, we went to go see it in Atlanta. Majority of the people who were in the audience was black women. So majority of the people who were in like watching him were black women. And I thought that was really fascinating. Like it was a lot of different groups, but it was like alternative black girls. So I find it really interesting that black women have really supported him and have tried like alternative black women, nerdy black girls have really supported him from the beginning because this was back when, I mean, his, he wasn't anywhere as big as he is now, but the majority of people who I saw were in the audience were black women. So there's like a disconnect. And I think that's, you know, what he himself speaks to. So this disconnect, I feel like was really exacerbated when I saw um, Atlanta. So when I first saw the TV series, like it's been years, I saw it when it first came out. So I remember enjoying it, finding it violent, which is another thing I'm gonna talk about towards the end is like his use of violence against black people, especially dark skinned people, because I think this is also a colorism issue. But the way that he talks about um, that this is depicted of a dark skinned woman and how she's seen as the angry black woman and this like narrative that I've never seen, but it creates like this um, false reality where people feel like black women are literally going up to black men ready to fight, especially dark skinned women. Yeah, I'm staring at you. How? Like a good girlfriend. Maybe I add value to his life. You don't need to act like you don't know what's going on out here. You got all the advantages in the world to be a good woman. You can afford to invest early. I ain't got time to be sitting out here with no community theater. Eight years and wishing on the goddamn star. Fun. I just love Devion. I love him too. And how like her anger was just very almost caricature-y. Let me know if y'all agree with that. But the anger was caricature. And like as a dark skinned woman who is often so easily like attacked and dogpiled, I don't think that we have like vim for random white girls at a house party to go and say, why are you dating our men? I just don't feel like, I'm not even straight. I don't know why I'm saying our men, but you know what I'm saying? I don't even think that's like something that is realistic, but it create it like validates narratives of people who don't already like black women. And that I think is what I speak to with Donald Glover. I feel like his media validates a certain experience of people who are already very apprehensive or don't like black women or diminish black women. Like it falls into that. In ATL, you know, they, it was like a scene where like the main character was a biracial girl and she was surrounded with all dark skin, brown to dark skin people. And like the only time that there was a dark skin woman who I remember at least from the series was when it was an angry black woman who was mad at a white girl for dating black men. And I also want to say that even in the TV series Swarm, there was so much anti-fatness and um, ableism that was happening. And I also feel like the way that they have dark skinned people who are often bullies or the aggressors, these are tropes in film that I often see within his work. And I find that a lot of the things he does doesn't surprise me. Like, I don't find it to be shocking that he's like this, you know? I don't find it to be shocking. And I feel like I can kind of see where, there was an interview that he did in where he interviewed himself. In the interview where he interviewed himself, which is already very strange, he asked himself, are you afraid of black women? And he responded back, why are you asking me that? And then he says, I feel like your relationship to them has played a big part in your narrative. And then he responds, I feel like you're using black women to question my blackness. He doesn't really address it. I think it's actually kind of strange to bring them, to bring us into it, which 
makes me feel like I just kind of wish we weren't in it type thing. I'm gonna end this talk discussing the way that Donald Glover uses violence um, on dark skinned people uh, in like his media often. So right, like when you see uh, This Is America, the first person who's pew pew da is a dark skinned guy. And then there's a scene where there's like people in the church and he sprays dark skinned people. And even in ATL, sorry, in Atlanta, there was scenes where there was dark skinned people often used at the front of violence. Even in Swarm, the first person to get pew pewed is a dark skinned um, person. It's not the only person that was showed, but I just feel like there's a very graphic way that it's depicted um, when it is dark skinned people. I talk like discussions as much about like the colorism, especially with the song Redbone that he created and how like there's a dark skinned person who looks kind of in pain on the cover. And but how the song is about like red bone, we all know in the black community, like a red bone is a light skinned person who, you know, you like. So like, but the representation on the cover isn't that. And I think it was to maybe soften the blow of how he interacts with black women so that because he maybe can expect the pushback. When I watched Swarm, the, the reason I felt so uncomfortable was because I couldn't help but wonder what people who are neurodivergent and people who are on a spectrum feel while watching that, especially like specifically black women and black people. Like I felt guilty kind of watching it because it plays into this narrative that's ableist where when people who are who have disabilities are made to feel like at any point they're a ticking time bomb kind of thing which creates more harm on people who are already marginalized so like I, I don't I think that that just kind of falls into a lot of genre of um serial pillars is like they, that they're playing off of you know kind of having fear of people who are, who are disabled but what I have noticed is like I have never seen like pretty much any representation of black um, people who are on a spectrum that's already like a, a group that's just like they try their hardest to act like even black women's ability to be diagnosed is already very difficult right so I don't even see these people but now you have it to where like they're made to be serial pillars and Black women are like probably the least group that has the chances of being serial pillars. I'm curious, like if you are black and neurodivergent, how did this uh, swarm make you feel? Um, if y'all just genuinely have thoughts, I think I've left out, like Donald Glover has such a long and extensive <laughs> history of doing really shysty, strange things to black women and having weird interactions with black women. Yeah, Donald Glover has a weird relationship to black women that's been going back many years. So I'm sure I left out things. So if I've left out things, like, let me know. Um, if you made it to the end, let me know if you like my makeup. It's a very bold eye look. I was really inspired by Whitney Houston's, what's that song? If four of you went out, no, if five of you went out, three of y'all are really cheap because I found uh, on the credit, it's not. Anyway, if you know the song, write it in the captions. And if you like the look, let me know. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.